A tragedy happened to my sister soon. Her pair of dancing little hands instantly became completely distorted, and she could no longer bow her upper body and stand on her toes to offer kata to the liberation army. At that time, it was slack forming. The school also had a winter break, and my parents had been struggling in the city line in the north of the village all day long. Half of that city line was immersed in the shallow water, and a layer of snow white powder would be exposed to the surface of the water within a few days. Except for cattails, nothing grew. But the village gave a deadly order to the land: rice, not cattails. The specific method was very simple: to bury land with the land, dig three feet, then dig three feet. Fill in three feet and fill in three feet. In this way, the upper three feet of soil and the lower three feet of soil would be completely altered. The construction site was really magnificent. Even the labors from the neighbor village had all been borrowed. Blue khaki figures were marvelous between the sky and the earth. Stubborn men do the mountain moving, ants moving, red flags dancing, the trumpets continuing, and the ambition in the speaker was launching straight to the sky. My parents must have been exhausted that winter. One night, when my father went to the restroom, he accidentally fell asleep while squatting there. The consequence, of course, conceivable, he fell to the toilet when he turned over. I would certainly go wild when my parents were away, but my sister Little Ting would not. She stayed in the blacksmith shop all day, watching those blacksmiths forging shovels for the construction site. For my sister, everything in the shop was really wonderful. The black iron block was burnt towards red, bright and clear. As if the iron block was a transparent container filled with mysterious juice. While the hammer hit it, it was even more charming, with the sound of "dang." The gorgeous iron filings bloomed like a chrysanthemum, opening a whole room, and they would be gone in a moment. The shop was full of pleasant metal sounds, and those iron blocks spread out in the pleasant metal sounds and turned into people's desired shape. I guessed that my sister must have been confused by the mysterious juice in the iron block, and the latter event proved this. When the blacksmith put the fresh iron on the anvil and left, she went up and stretched out her little hands. Little Ting wanted to hold her beloved iron in her hands. My sister, Little Ting, must have been waiting for this moment for a long time. My sister did not scream. In fact, my sister fainted almost at the same time she was holding the iron block. Her little hands suddenly changed their appearance. There was no blood dripping from my sister's hands. On the contrary, the wound appeared as if white scraps had formed. My sister woke up in our father's arms. As soon as she woke up. My father pulled my sister down. Father walked to the door and picked up mother's clothes stick from behind the door. My father hit my butt with a murderous hand. Had it not been my mother's return, I might have died under the stick of my father. I felt my father's mood at the time only after I became a father. That time, I took my daughter to the Confucius Temple on a bicycle. When I walked to Sunshine Street, my daughter's left foot was caught in the wheel, and a piece of nail-sized skin was scraped off. In infinite distress, I accidentally slapped myself. I thought of my father as soon as I slapped. I froze in the street. My daughter took my hand and asked me why this is happening. What can I say? What can I say? My sister's hands were disabled. This little girl with strong self-esteem had since put her little hands in her pockets, and sister became more silent. Hands became taboo for my sister. She put this taboo in her jacket pockets. 
one on the left and one on the right. But my sister's fantasies had never stopped for a moment. As soon as the new year came, my sister asked my mother, "Will my hands be good next year?" Mother said, "Yes, your hands will be good next year." My sister remembered this commitment. After the Spring Festival, my sister spent three hundred and sixty-five days looking forward to the New Year's Eve of the next year. Before the New Year's Eve dinner, my sister put her hands on the table and suddenly said, "My hands will be good next year." Mother didn't say no, but never made a wish again. Her silence seemed so cruel on New Year's Eve. And father's was even more so. The second year, what blessed was the cattails in the silly soil in the north of the village. After the beginning of the spring, those green wheat seedlings were all dead, replaced by cattails. The cattails this year grew really crazy. After the Qingming Festival, the seeding line was soaked in the water again, and the cattails did not appear to have come out of the water; they landed from the sky, dense, rich, and shiny, like carefully cultivated. When the midsummer came, those cattails had fully grown; the narrow leaves were flexible and slender, one by one, piece by piece, being slipped. Being slim again, even an advertent wind could blow them side by side. However, when the wind stops, the blades would bounce back quickly with the best toughness, which could be called surging. Large tracks of cattails did not buy people's work; they had grown out of an independent world in the silly soil, a world with strong blood. Silly and ugly land is just such a place. The world belongs to both rice and cattails, but eventually it belongs to cattails. But we like cattails, especially the brown specks of male cattails. We call them cattail sticks. In the days when the cattails were withered, we aim at them with a slingshot. The moment the cattail stick was hit, it would silently explode a ball of snow white, and the snow white puffs would fly everywhere, and then flow around. We liked this game. Adults did not like it for a simple reason: the cattail puffs could not fill the stomach, and the flying snow puffs were definitely the last funeral of rice and wheat. When the winter came, we chose a windy day. We were holding cattail sticks, and a dozen people stood side by side on a concrete bridge. The strong wind whizzed forward behind our ears, and we knocked the concrete railings of the bridge with the cattail sticks in our hands. And the wind sent the puffs to the sky. We knocked hard. The stick was limitless anyway. The sky was full of crazy puffs, fluffy and sky-covering. I didn't know where my sister was at that time. She never stayed with people. However, seeing from what happened later, my sister Little Ting must be hiding in an inconspicuous place, picking at our game. My sister liked this game, but she was never with anyone. On New Year's Day, Sister Little Ting finally waited for a strong wind. My sister stood on the concrete bridge alone and took the family calendar in her hand. The calendar was hung in front of Li Tie Mei and Grandma Li, just two days ago by my mother. My sister tore off the day of bright red New Year's Day in the strong wind and threw it in the wind with her broken fingers. Then the black second, the black third, the black fourth, the black fifth, and the black sixth. My sister tore off all the black and red days. The days were snow white, one by one, flying along the river in the winter wind. They rose, rolled, and struggled little by little. Finally, fell to the surface of the water and went away with the waves. 
Many people had seen my sister's actions, and they had also seen the days of flowing and trembling on the river. People did not speak. I believe that many people had seen the ominous signs of my sister right in front of them.